Malcolm Brooks has led a long and fascinating life. Rally driver, car dealership, important local politician, and pilot. All of which he shares with his wife, Trisha, and now with me. This is taking off at Warnavar. And you're, you're actually uh, in the pilot seat at this point? Yes. And Trisha was in the co-pilot seat. Great moments, for instance, when he and Trish, on the same day at the Newcastle Aero Club, got their wings together. Like Good morning. So where were you born, Malcolm? Born in Gosford mm -hmm. at the Inamoa Hospital, mm -hmm. which was located on the opposite side of the Gosford Sailing Club on the 16th of June 1930. Wow. And uh, your father was a farmer, was he? Yes, he came out from England, migrated out here, worked at Brownlee Sawmill for a number of years, Mm -hmm. and then bought property and planted oranges, lemons and grapefruit. Yeah, which were very big in this area, weren't they? Yes, they were, and that was at Springfield. And during the war, there was only 12 properties in the whole of Springfield. The road just went to a dead end, and uh, during heavy rain, it would flood and you couldn't get into town. <laughs> what impression do you have of what he would have been like as a boy. His mum and dad said he was easy to look after. Right. Um, he was not rebellious or state. Not rebellious, no. Not no. as a little fella. Not what I heard from right. Grandma or right. Bob anyway. And so. from there you got into the school. Did you, which school did you go to? Uh, we went to the Gosford Primary School, which was located on a hill where the TAFE College is now. Okay, now when you say we, you, you're talking about your brothers and sisters or? No, I've only got one sister. Okay, so she went there too, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is she younger or older? She's younger. Right. So what was it like at the school? I, I hear you weren't that good. Uh, no, I was all right at the primary school. Uh -huh. It was later on I wasn't too good. Uh -huh. And during the war, somebody built trenches in the war that the bell would ring or the siren would ring and all the school children had to go down and hide in the trenches in case there were any bombs coming over right. and uh, if you poked your head up the headmaster who was at a booming voice Walpole his son was Len Walpole that was president of the sailing club later on and uh, I used to, at lunchtime, sometimes, go down to where the Gosford Library is now. Uh -huh. That's where my grandmother lived oh. with uh, uh, one of her children, and they'd give me a nice back baked dinner for lunch. Really? And then I'd come back to school. So where Kibble Park now is, that your grandmother lived? Yes, on the corner uh, where the library is situated. Wow. So you're talking about yourself in primary school now? Or? Yes, primary school. Right. And so you were quite well behaved and good yes, student. Yes, I think so. It's a long time ago. <laughs> of course it is. So what about what happened when you got to secondary school and where was that? That was at the Gosford High School, mm -hmm. which was the only high school on the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. And when uh, we were there for three years, I left there at the intermediate stage rather than go on to the fifth year and we were the first all boys class in that school. All the other classes were mixed, girls mm -hmm. and boys, uh -huh. and we were a bit unruly. We played up on a number of teachers. <laughs> uh, I ran a crown and anchor ga gambling school which the prefects found out about. And uh, when they did, all the class was lined up outside the headmaster's office. <laughs> and we went in one by one. And because I was the organiser of the gambling school, 
I was the last in and it got three canes on one hand, three canes on the other. So did you hear from Malcolm, you know, when you were courting, did he tell you these stories about Crown and Anchor gambling at school? No, of course not. <laughs> I didn't tell him a lot about me either. <laughs> and the sequel to that was that the headmaster came in at the end of the term and said, I don't want any of you boys asking for a reference. Because <laughs> nobody will get one. And yet, uh, David Walpole became a surveyor. Uh, Charlie Whittaker set up Whittaker's sports store in Gosford. Alan Davison became an international cricketer. Uh, and most of them, one became a professor, Joe Norman, and uh, I went into the motor business, along with Kevin Booth. Kevin Booth was in Really? There. So you still remember the smarter that cane on your hand, do you? Or I was don't know whether I remember it. I know I got it. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but was, that, not... was that an exceptional event, or did you get caned? No, I time? think that's the only time I can remember. Right that I got the cane, but it was worth it. I made uh, quite a bit of money out of the running the school. How, was that like two up or something? A uh, crown and anchor. It's You got a board with a crown on it and an anchor, and it was a well-known gambling board that was used in those years. What did you have to do to play? Dice. Dice. Oh, you threw dice? Threw dice, and wherever the dice went, if it went on the crown, three dice, then we, I had to pay three times the money that was on that. Right. If it went on somewhere else where there was no uh, dice on it, I'd take the money. So um, this was popular. Lots of kids played, uh, gambled with you, did they? Oh, yes. Well, I think we had about, in the end, we had about 30 or 40 mm. down in the bush <laughs> of the school ground and went on for about eight or nine months. So what was Gosford like in those days? It was a smallish town, I suppose, was it? Yes, I think there would have only been about 7,000 population. I can't be sure of that, Mike. Right. And um, uh, no high-rise buildings, of course. Oh, and, no, none at um, all. Uh, the what? first high-rise building in Gosford was the Gosford Council, City Council building, which I was the sponsor of. Right. And how much vehicle traffic was around? Was it horse and cart as well as trucks? Oh yes, trucks? it was a horse and cart. My uh, grandfather was a name was Jacob Bushell from Peach Ridge. He was on the Shire Council, and he used to come into the council meeting horse and sulky. Uh -huh. now, I don't know whether he came in in the morning, went back at night, or whether he stayed. And he was a great friend of James Kibble. Ah, Kibble Park. Mm. Mm. Maybe that's where I got the inclination from to go into local government. I don't know. Many years later. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so it was a pretty happy childhood you had, was it? Oh, yes, yes. I, it was good to be on the farm life. I used to assist my dad uh, and uh, picking oranges, lemons, and we had a cow where we used to get milk from. I used to milk the cow and Dad invented what was called the Brooks fruit grader. There was no such thing as fruit grader there and I used to help him build that from the template that he set, said. He used to wind it by hand. Yeah. Later on he built it with an electric motor and we sold them all up the coast. They were good for apples, pears as well as oranges. So how and did it work, like a hopper, was it? You put the fruit in the top and something? And yeah, the, and the fruit came down and it was divided in sections with the roller that was in the uh, fruit grater. The oranges would go along and the small ones would fall into a bin and right at the end would take the larger bin. Right. <laughs> and in, in those days, uh, people weren't as obsessed by how beautiful fruit would look as today, were they? Because every today, everything has to be polished and... Yeah. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I know when the war was on, that the Americans, when they came to Sydney and all around New South Wales, they wanted oranges. They needed oranges for the troops. 
And they said, we don't need them ripe, we'll buy them green. One <laughs> pound a case. Really? <laughs> and they would ripen later? Yeah. Do you think the fruit tasted better back then? All the same? I, I couldn't be sure on that. No, okay. So you got on well with your mum and dad? Yes, very well. And what about that sister? What was her name? Shirley. Uh-huh. She was younger or older? Younger. Uh-huh. I taught. Uh, there was a little, little church down the bottom of the hill where we lived, and I, uh, we used to go there. And I ended up teaching Sunday school there, uh -huh. that little Angli Anglican church. So you, were you a religious family then? Uh, well, yes, I'd say so, yeah. We mm. were believers mm. in Christianity. Right. And you members went... of the uh, Springfield Anglican Church. And you went every Sunday? Oh, I don't know whether we went every, every Sunday, but as often as Mum right. and Dad could. Actually, Dad built the church. He not only ran the farm, but he built a few houses at various areas around Gosford, two in Albany Street. One is still there, hasn't been pulled down, but renovated. And he rented those out. I used to go around and uh, collect the rent every huh? time. And at one stage, he made me paint one of the houses. <laughs> it didn't take to that too well. So your family was fairly well off. They didn't suffer in the Depression too much? No, I don't think so. Uh, he worked very hard. Uh, first, he worked seven days a week, and it was mainly mainly the citrus industry right but then what helped him also was building these houses mm. and renting them out right so uh brooks was a fairly prominent name in the town was it your dad was well known and respected oh I yes suppose. he was well known mm. and he married the uh, a lady called alice bushel mm -hmm. and that's the bushel family from peach ridge and you might know Bushels Road at Peach Ridge, which was named after my grandfather. Mm -hmm. So you only stayed in school for, till intermediate, right? Yes. Which is what, about 15 or something? Yeah, 15. And you, and you uh, left school with no uh, <coughs> recommendation from the principal? No, no reference. <laughs> Nobody in that class got a reference from <laughs> Principal Gibson, was his name. He used to walk very quietly along the corridor, so you didn't hear him coming. So we called him the cat. <laughs> so you got no reference from the school from the cat, as he no. was called, and uh, but that didn't make any difference, did it? Because you did pretty well. Yes, uh, I have no regrets, and I think most of the class, because we used to started a reunion about ten years after leaving school. One of our schoolmates got everyone together and we had a reunion once a year then once every five years uh, for a while and we invited the wives along and it was very strange that all the wives got together real well. <laughs> now look back to the childhood period you were here on the coast which was a pretty remote area did you ever go to Sydney for example? Only with my parents. You would have gone sometimes, would you? Yes. When Dad went down to the market, there was no Hawkesbury River Bridge. Mm -hmm. He had to go across by ferry. And he'd go to the Sydney markets because he had a relationship there with one of the dealers down there where he used to send his fruit. But you remember going down to Sydney. And what was your impression of the big smoke? Uh... Well, I tended to like to go to Sydney and see it in its old-time sort of aspect that you don't see today. Right. It wasn't as crowded. Uh -huh. The traffic could move quite easily. And, and, and trams. We had trams in the city yes. of Sydney then. They were great. And um, so you would go by train, would you? Or No. Dad, being a farmer, always had a utility. Mm. A Chevrolet utility. Mm -hmm. But there was a train, of course. Oh, yes, there yeah. was a train service. Yeah. On the same train line that you've got now. 
Right. And when you went down to Sydney, did you have a, did you have a treat? Did you go to milk bars or to the pictures? Or No, I never went to pictures. There was a picture theatre in Gosford in those days. Yeah, that was the Regal, wasn't it? Well, there were two. The Valencia uh, Theatre mm. up the northern part of Gosford and the Regal Theatre, which uh, where the Commonwealth Bank used to be. Right. Okay, and was going to the pictures a, 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 a special fun for you or not? Very exciting. <laughs> uh, what about his parents? Uh, you got on well with them? Oh, yes. Mr. and Mrs. Brooks, Pop and Grandma. They were just so delightful. They were country people. They weren't pretentious, nothing like that. Right. They were just farmers. Like Pop had the, it, the citrus orchard and... Oh no, I got on really well. And I, I, I hoped, and I think they, well, they liked me in the end, so yeah. <laughs> they were probably wondering about me to start with, but yes, no.